Hey everybody! Um, today I decided to film another video of my process. I actually filmed one yesterday doing a very similar painting. I realized that my video was filming vertically the whole time, so nobody likes to watch that. I understand. I <laughs> spent a long time doing it and then I realized at the very end, so it's kind of frustrating, but today I've got it set up horizontally, so. Um, I wanted to start with uh, a small painting, um, a watercolor. I've been working on this series of Zodiac um, portraits, and um, today I'm working on Aquarius. So um, usually when I start, what I do is I'll sketch out my drawing first. So I've got, I had it sketched out on my regular sketchbook. Um, I just drew it out, what I wanted the sketch to look like, and then I traced it onto a piece of tracing paper. Um, which is right here and then um, I want to transfer it into my watercolor paper so I'm using uh, um, Paul Rubens uh, watercolor sketchbook it is 100% cotton paper and it's 140 pound um, so it's a really good quality paper it's hot press so it's got a smoother texture so the cold press has a has more of a texture on it but this one is a hot press so it's got a smoother texture um, either one is fine I like both but I do prefer the 100% um, cotton papers because they do absorb the color quite a bit better. So um, what I do is I'll just go ahead and sketch it out in the design. I put it on tracing paper and then I'm going to transfer it over and I transfer it with a piece of um, tracing paper that I just kind of scribbled on with graphite and you can buy transfer paper too but this is just as easy and you don't have to buy it then. So um, just scroll with a piece of graphite on the back of this and then flip it over and it will serve as transfer paper. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do this and I'm going to trace over the design. I taped my um, image down onto the paper so that it doesn't move out of the way as I'm tracing just in case I bump it so it doesn't get dislodged. And then I'm going to go ahead and just trace over the lines. Usually I will use a colored pencil. I'm using this blue uh, Prismacolor Cull Erase pencil. I actually really like these pencils. I like to sketch with them a lot. And um, I am going to use this to trace over just so I can see where the lines are um, after I've traced over them. So I will go ahead and do this. And as I trace over the lines, you will be able to see that it is pushing the graphite through onto the paper beneath. So you can see that line get transferred over. So I'm just going to basically go through all the lines that I drew here and trace it onto the sketchbook paper. Okay. Okay, so I've moved, I removed the um, tracing paper layer and I finished tracing all the lines. You can see I've got um, some smudgy spots in here and that's fine because I did use graphite on my transfer paper, which is one bonus of making it yourself because a lot of the transfer papers you can buy aren't made with actual like graphite, which is erasable. A lot of them are made with some other material that you cannot erase. It's impossible. And I do have some of that graphite paper, but I usually only use it for things that I know that I'm going to end up drawing over the lines or, um, you know, won't be a big deal if the lines show through or if I can't erase them. So for this one, it's just a really like rough outline. And so I just go in and kind of erase some of the smudgy stuff that came off onto the paper. I'm using a kneaded eraser. Um, these kneaded erasers are amazing and I use these for my watercolor paper because the watercolor paper, um, because it is 100% cotton, it's kind of delicate. So using a regular eraser on it sometimes will you know, make the paper crumb up a little bit, which will create problems later on when you're adding the paint. Um, the paint sometimes soaks into those little like roughed up areas in a different way. The color might show up darker. So I just like to do it this way. Um, now with my watercolor drawings, paintings, I like to do a drawing underneath um, with pencil. I have found that this is uh, the style that I prefer to draw in, and I like the effect that I get with it on the finished project. So 
a lot of people don't like to have their pencil lines show through underneath their watercolor paintings and that's just a per personal preference you know it depends on your style depends on your preference depends on what you like aesthetically I just happen to like it um, I like the way it looks and I like actually the process of it because it definitely makes finding the values in my painting a lot easier and I do tend to paint over most of it um, while I'm doing my painting but it makes the values show through into the drawing a lot easier and it will show up underneath the paint too so you don't have to control the um, the pigmentation in the paint as much when you have a good underdrawing. So I'm just going over all the lines here. I'm going to go ahead and trace all the lines over and then I'm going to go ahead and fill in my values as well. It'll be a little bit rough. It's not going to be like a super, super detailed drawing, um, but it will have those values in there. So it'll look like a nice sketch after I'm finished. Okay, so I've got my drawing all laid out. Um, I've got a, a sketch and some values laid out. And I actually included um, the values just because, like I said, I like to get the undertones in there so that I can paint over it and have those values laid out. But I didn't do it super dark. Um, I don't wanna have like a ton of dark, dark lines because I do still wanna be able to cover it with paint. Um, I am starting with a couple of brushes. I don't know if I'll use all of these, but these are the brushes that I got out to use just in case. This one might might, might be too big for this paper since it is only like a five by seven. Um, but these are squirrel hair brushes that I actually got these on Amazon. They are relatively affordable, but also hold the liquid really well. So they're good for watercolor painting. You want a brush that will be soft enough and flexible enough and um, be able to hold enough liquid to keep the paint in there so you don't have to keep dipping it in the paint. I've got a number eight here. This is the biggest one that I've got out to use, even though it is kind of a medium to smallish brush, but because of the taper size, I want something smaller. Um, then I've also got uh, this other one that is the one I'll probably use most is number four. Um, and then I've got a couple of detail brushes that I also got out. And these are not squirrel hair brushes. These are just synthetic but these will be fine for the details to get into the fine lines and stuff. So um, I've also got out my half pan watercolor tray set. Uh, I just got this on Amazon as well. It's not super expensive. I think this was about 30 bucks. Um, it's a Phoenix brand. Um, and this is, I believe the 48 color set. I'm not gonna sit here and count them, but um, it's a really nice set. I actually moist them with a little spray bottle of water before I start, it just helps to keep the paints a little bit wetter so I don't have to brush uh, dip my brush in them in the water every time I want to get a little bit of paint out. And it just helps to get the paints a little bit wetter first. So um, I am going to end up starting with watercolor and I'll go in after the watercolor is dry with color pencil. So I like to get the details with a color pencil, but, um, but the watercolor will be the majority of the painting that I'm going to do. So my watercolor set tray comes with a, a little tray, a mixing tray area, but I've also got um, another little like uh, ceramic palette that I use sometimes to mix paint on. I do like the ceramic palettes better than the plastic ones. I feel like the plastic ones tend to beat up the water beads up on them a lot more. So sometimes it's harder to mix paint, but I mean, whatever your preference is, anything would work. Um, sometimes I even just use like a regular like dinner plate if you have a white one. So, um, what I like to do is I'll start off by just kind of like mixing up a skin tone color first. Um, you get plenty of pigment and then you can add more water to it as you go. So it makes it a little bit easier to have the pigment mixed up so you don't have to keep trying to match it as you go if you run out of color. So I'll just mix up like a nice skin tone. I know this looks really dark right now, but uh, as I add water to it, it will lighten it up. And... Maybe a little bit of pink in there. Okay, 
and then if I want to know what it's going to look like, you can have like a little scrap paper of watercolor paper next to you. I don't really, I don't always do that though. This one looks like it'll be good. Okay, so I want like a really uh, like muted, watered down sort of version of this to start with. So I'm just going to start with a very light layer. And I'm going to start with her skin. So I'm just going to sort of fill in all the areas where her skin tone shows. And I want it to be watered down quite a bit because I don't want it to be too dark. I want to be able to go in with more layers. And I'm actually painting it um, on the dry paper, straight onto the dry paper at first as well. But I do want to make sure that my brush is nice and wet so it doesn't dry too quickly because as it dries, um, it may leave little lines in between the um, areas that you want to blend. So that's why I want to make sure that I am doing uh, this with plenty of water at first. Okay. Um, the other thing with watercolor is anything that you want to leave white or light, oftentimes you have to make sure that you've got it all, um, that you leave it all, what that area white, and don't put paint on it because it's very difficult to lighten watercolor after it dries. It's actually virtually impossible. And there's a couple different ways you can do it. You can add highlights with like uh, white gouache. Um, after the fact, which is kind of like an opaque watercolor, sort of a, a cross between watercolor and acrylics, um, but you can reconstitute it, which is nice. Or you can use like a white gel pen, or you can use colored pencil over the top, or pastel. So there's multiple ways you can like add highlights afterwards, but um, if you want to make sure that your values are there, that your lightest value stays, stays white, then just make sure you leave a space there. Um, I tend to just go back in with gouache or like a gel pen afterwards. So I'm not super concerned with making sure I leave all those highlights, but I do want to make sure that my lightest values are, uh, you know, kept at a very pale tone. So um, as you can see, if I kind of rinse out my brush, dry it off a little bit, I can lift some of the color that's there. Just like so. Just in some of those little later, later areas. So for this um, image, I, uh, I did use some reference photos just for the pose of the um, figure. And then I sort of, you know, embellished it a bit, obviously. She wasn't, uh, she wasn't posed with an octopus on her head or drinking out of a cup but I did um, I did find the image online I think it was like on Shutterstock so that I could get the pose reference um, accurate I do like to to draw and paint from references just because it makes it more accurate for me it makes me feel like I'm getting a more accurate representation of like how the figure is actually posed um, so that is where this sort of pose came from and I'm just going to go ahead and fill in the rest of her skin and then I'm going to go ahead and start painting the rest and I'll probably just do like a sort of time lapse video so you can see how that process looks once I get started.
so I don't know what happened. Part of my video didn't record, but um, I went in and started with the background. I wanted to do a sort of a contrasting color to the octopus, so I chose more of a like tealy greeny blue, um, and then sort of a contrasting greenish yellow color too. Um, I wanted to make it bright and make that figure and the octopus stand out. So since I used a lot of cool colors, I wanted to add some like warmer tones. I didn't want it to be too warm though because it's still Aquarius. So I feel like she still needs, you know, that water element uh, even in the background. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fill this part in. Maybe do some little like drop drippy stuff or add some little interesting textures into that background just to make it less boring. And then once this is all done, we'll let it dry, and then we will go in with color pencils on top to add the details and the blending and stuff. All right, we are in the home stretch right now. Um, so I've got my watercolor painting done. I'm gonna put away my paints. Um, the next step for me that I usually like to do is go ahead and go in with some color pencils to um, fill in some of the spots I might have missed or do some of the little like fine details that are really difficult to get with the watercolor paint, especially because the um, painting is so small. So even with the fine detail brush, um, it doesn't hold a whole lot of paint in it, so it makes it a little bit harder. Um, I have a giant box of old Prismacolor pencils um, that I've had forever, and I'm gonna go ahead and use these. Um, my Prismacolors are super old, but they just don't go bad. They're, they're amazing pencils. I um, uh, I've bought like a couple of replacements for some that ran out. I've had a couple of sets over the years, but um, they're definitely trusty. So what I like to do is go in and I'll like lighten up some of the darker spaces that I might have wanted to, to have highlights on. And I'll darken up some of the um, fine, finer detailed areas just to really deepen those shadows. Um, kind of get a really better contrast between my values. And it's just my style. It's probably a little bit cartoony. I don't, I don't know really how to describe it, but it's not like super photorealistic. I enjoy looking at photorealism and I've tried to achieve it. Um, I, I can do it sometimes, but um, not with watercolor. Watercolor is not a medium that I have mastered. It's just something I really like and I really enjoy playing with it and seeing what I can do and the effects that it gives and everything. So it's more just like a fun thing. Um, when I'm really trying to paint something realistic, I would probably choose um, chalk pastel uh, because it blends really well. Um, oil paint and even color pencil I can get pretty detailed with. But um, for this, I'm just adding little little details to it. I don't want to go too crazy. As you may or may not be able to tell, um, it is now getting late. <laughs> the natural light from the window is not coming in very well anymore, but 
Um, I did finish going with a colored pencil. My last step is I am going to go ahead and do some highlights with my um, white jelly roll gel pen. And this is just to give it some extra pops of highlight. I mean, just to make it really stand out. Um, sorry for the shadows here. I know that it's kind of annoying with this light being here, but I'll try to make it more visible. Well, despite the fact that I lost part of my footage, I don't know, I think my phone just stopped recording. I don't know what happened. I'm going to have to get some better <laughs> equipment probably eventually. But um, other than that, it, everything seemed to go pretty well this time. And um, this is finished. So I'm going to go ahead and scan this in. I'll make a digital copy along with the other ones. And... Um, hopefully turn these into some prints and um, let me know how you guys like this video. You know, if you um, like, if you like the sort of instructional stuff, if you'd rather just see like time-lapse videos, what kinds of things do you guys want to see? You know, let me know. Um, let me know in the comments. Let me know if you personally know me, <laughs> you know, what kinds of things you like to watch, um, what kinds of things you like to see, what would you like me to do, what would you like me to see me make? Um, but thank you so much for watching.